Good day, Southeast Asia. We are back here for the Garena Premier League Summer 2017. We have just returned from a game between the Vietnam second seed YG facing up against Indonesia's uh, champion Headhunter. So let's get into the next game. Of course, we'll be your shoutcasters for that one. I'm Atlas. With me is Neep. And our next game is Headhunters once again facing up against Philippines Team Manila Eagles. Yeah, and I mean, this is going to be the third game, I believe, for both these teams. Headhunters currently 0 2 as, as of now, while Team Manila Eagles are 1 1. So, an important game for Definitely. both of these teams. And it sucked for Headhunters to finish the day with 0 win. So, I'm sure they're going to be looking really hard to try to w take this victory. The game prior was a bit of a crushing defeat, though. So that might have been affected them, affected them mentally. We'll have to see. Yeah, they will have to bounce back from that and just continue with a hunt uh, for a win here. Uh, looking at the pick and ban so far, wow, it's going to be Twitch and Callista ban away from Marky as well as the uh, the Zach from Cups on the side of TME still banning out the tanks. Yeah, and we do see it will be the Rek'Sai first pick for the Headhunters, and TME they actually opted to ban the Cho'Gath and the Maokai this time around rather than picking it up we did see in the previous game against Young Generation I believe they did opt to take them rather than ban them away this time around it's gonna be the bans so let's see how they adjust the drafting it looks like they're gonna be opting to go for the possible Jarvan I really like this pick because not only is it a pick for Coops it's also a pick for JLC if ever it's a very yeah. uh, flexible pick that they, they can go for but seems like it's just going uh, it is going to be the Jarvan as well as the Thresh for Rocks Rocks one of his significant champions yeah. is that Thresh as for H2 picking up a very scary front line for the bot lane it's going to be Alistar yeah and I mean this is looking very cookie cutter for TME right now this is something that we've seen time and time again you take that Thresh you take that Jarvan, who knows what we might see. We might see maybe the Saya for Marky. We might see the Shen for JLC. That's what I'd be expecting at this point. But we do see the Alistar Bears locked in. So their bottom lane duel already locked in. For the Headhunters, Corky being hovered over. A pretty safe pick. However, they do need to be careful as Lucian is open. So they might have to invest a ban into Lucian if they do decide to lock in this Corky in the third rotation. Yeah, Lucian is going to be a pain for this Corky if they do lock it in. So we will see if TME does a smart thing and invest a ban against the uh, really tech pick against the Corky. We'll be seeing Oriana locked away from Patrick. We'll be seeing how H2 responds to this one. They will have to ban out either a mid laner or a or the AD carry here. Marky will not be using a Tristana hyper carry for this game against H2. We'll be seeing how TME responds to this one. Yeah, so let's see. Like I said, the Saya is still open. If Marky does want to pick an AD carry, he can also opt for maybe a. Actually, the Twitch was banned, so. Right now, I only Cassiopeia see Saya is the one as banned the most out. viable pick and Cassiopeia banned, so that does leave Lucian open. We haven't seen a Lucian yet today. It's been banned out every single time. It's open for this yeah. one, but uh, it seems like it'll be more likely to go to H2 side, seeing as they do not have a mid laner just yet. As for TME, what does Marky have up his sleeve? Saya and Tristana ban away. That's going to be the jinx you said earlier. It's quite a fringe pick, not very likely, but here it seems like Marky is confident in his ability to use that champion to its optimal effectiveness. See how H2 locks it away with their final two picks for their mid lane and their top lane. Yeah, and I mean, the jinx is really interesting. It's not something you'd see very often, but it looks like TME is confident, and I wouldn't blame them. Marky and Rox have had a pretty solid laning phase throughout most of their games today. It's just been like the side lanes, the solo lanes rather, have been kind of struggling to be honest. And I think if they're able to just maintain the level of play in the bottom lane that they have been doing throughout the day, they should be okay. But it will be the Kled and the Vladimir locked in. So interesting way to round out your team composition. There's a lot of survivability for this one with Skarl, with the regen from the transfusion and it's quite solid in the way of initiation as well. You've got charge, you've got the headbutt, pulverized combo, you've got a lot, of, a little bit of utility from the Chains of Corruption as well. So there is that. As for TME, they'll be locking it away for the top lane rumble, rumble. for JLC. Quite a bit of magic damage across the board for TME. Very good initiation if they get a good 
like combo with the Cataclysm into the uh, Equalizer and perhaps the package uh, that is a possibility that they can go for later in the game. Very solid laning po possibly for Marky and Rox as well. Yeah, and this is going to be the first time we've seen JLC not on a tank today. So far we've seen him only playing tanks. We saw him on that Shen, I believe, and we also saw him on the Choga. So first time for him on a carry sort of oriented champion, the Rumble. And we actually haven't really seen JLC play much Rumble in the regular season. So it's going to be something interesting to see as he practices this Rumble during the period between the PGS finals and now. We'll yeah, have to find out. It has to be something that we have to look out for. The battle of the Yordles in the top lanes, Kled versus Rumble. This is quite a, an interesting matchup. Uh, looking to see, but so far the composition coming from Headhunters is pretty interesting. And what do you think so far on paper? Who looks more formidable in each phase of the game? Uh, looking at the team compositions, I do kind of worry for both teams do have a pretty good opportunity with their late game. They do have the Tristana, I mean not the Tristana rather, they, they do have the Jinx on the TME side, so that's a really big late game hyper carry, as well as the quirky double AD carry, can't go wrong with that in the late game. However, if you look at the Headhunter side, they do have a lot of tools. They do have that Vladimir who can do a lot of damage, a lot of sustain in that late, later stage of the game. But coming into the early game, I feel like it comes down to the junglers once again. Definitely. It doesn't really matter how your lanes go, because in this meta, it's pretty stale in their laning phase. Without the influence of the junglers, there isn't much potential for those solo kills as the previous metas before then. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. Definitely, uh, junglers really have a lot to say uh, about how the game will go, the pace of the game, who gets ahead, and who gets pressured. So they have to be very, very careful on how they path. And in the content that we made Rift Talk for uh, discussing the PGS, the fact is, if Koops does not perform well for the rest of his team, then it's going to be very difficult for them to win. Even if Trevor gets behind, if Koops can make up for it, then everything's going to be hunky-dory for uh, TME. On the side of Headhunters, it seems like they have very solid jungling as well from uh, from their jungler, uh, Chris Kyle. Of course, as we get into the game, loaded onto Summer's Rift for our sixth game for tonight. It's gonna be Headhunters from Indonesia facing up against Philippines Team Manila Eagles. Yeah, and let's see if they're gonna go for the engage. And going back to Chris Kyle, he's been pretty aggressive so far over the past games mm. we've seen him. And a lot of the time, he has been punished for this aggression. So will he opt for a more safer style this time around? Or will he try to continue this aggression and hope that TME is the team that eventually succumbs to this aggression, lets him get away with it, yeah. and just snowball the early game for this headhunter team. Because Cups might have some trouble with over-aggressive uh, opponents in the jungle. Uh, he is often playing these kinds of jungles that really want to gank for him, and when Minions they're being uh, attacked by the opposing jungler, it's kind of difficult for Cups. but we'll see how all of that pans out here. Cruiser. Getting a little bit of harass against them. I yeah, I believe that the hook was used for the Thresh, able to get that pick onto Cruiser. So this means that level 2 advantage will definitely go to Marky and Rox, at least in the pacing. So that will be a little bit of a small, very small victory on the side of TME, yeah. but it might not be consequential in the wrong, long run. It looks like Cruiser is going to miss at least two creeps with. How that's pretty, that's pretty big, actually. And that's pretty big. It allows the Thresh and Jinx to just all in, all in him really early, and he won't be able to do much. He won't have the trade damage available. Yeah, being and the saving one. grace might be that Luban might have the headbutt pulverize combo, or at least the headbutt to just lock away Markier Rocks from the offensive. But still, it's going to be very hard for Cruiser. Once again, in this uh, in their third game, Cruiser will, might have a harder time there in the bot lane. Yeah, it seems they're playing it pretty calmly. Yeah, and this looks like it's going according to TME's plan. They want to make sure Marky gets the safe and solid laning phase. And judging from the first few minutes of the game, it looks like this will indeed be the case. However, the, like we said earlier, the junglers can really change the... Uh, dictate how the lane turns up. So if Chris Kyle wants to keep camping bottom and gets those successful ganks, then that's going to be trouble. Oh, Coach might be in trouble here. He is going to be... A in under attack here against Boss, but Chris Kyle goes for the flash on Burrow, going for the first blood against Cups, and that's what I'm talking about. Uh, they meet each other there in the top lane, and I love how Box just 
uh, responded immediately, yeah. and that's Koops' problem with and aggressive opponents. The thing is, Headhunters knew that Koops was going to go for the invade. They had the wards down in the river and mm -hmm. in the raptors, so they knew he was going to start raptors. So they were aware of the possibility that Koops could go for their blue buff. That's why we saw the Rek'Sai go immediately towards that blue, and he was caught out, and good thing it was... Box was there to respond to the first blood for the set hunter side. And that oh, goes man. on to the wreck side. We were talking about earlier, I think, uh, in the earlier games, how getting your early jungle item is really important as it allows you to get those wards down early before the enemy jungler lets you establish control of the map in that early game, lets you dictate how the enemy jungler ganks as you will have the vision on him when he decides to visit a part of the map. And that's going to be really important. Definitely. The Knowledge is power here for these junglers, and, but it seems that Chris Kyle is going instead for the two long swords, uh, not opting for the Tracker's Knife. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to be opting for a different Rek'Sai build wherein you rush the Tiamat, looking for the early damage and looking for the faster clear. But again, we look back at this bottom lane. They're doing a pretty good job of harassing them. And I Pushing think them saw Ruben. Yeah, Ruben got really low earlier. Mm, so, but uh, at least for Headhunters, Cruiser is not behind at all in terms of the CS. That is the pri the consolation prize for them there. And the level dis uh, disparity isn't that big uh, in terms of the XP. Market probably is like 20% um, more in the progress towards level 4. You have Trevor trying to go for something against Patrick. Groups also around the vicinity in case Chris Kyle goes for a counter gank, but he's actually be very efficient with his time using this to steal some resources away from Cooks. Yeah, and something I just noticed is Trevor opting for the ignite, and here comes the cheeky engage. I don't feel they're doing much. They actually lose that trick. Yeah, that's the problem with the Alistar and the Lenny phase. Not that strong. But look at that. That's going to be the death sentence on the cruiser, but the traps do not actually um, get on point. The cruiser, and he's able to flash away. Still, Sun of Spell Burn. Yeah, very good ideal situation for TME right now. This should enable Jinx to just get that safe in case, hopefully snowball it later. But yeah, going back to the mid lane, Trevor with the Ignite, opting for a very aggressive summer spell. Rather than getting the cleanse, barrier, or heal, possibly exhaust. And it's gonna be questionable given how much dive potential there is on this H2 team composition. Just being able to dive in with Chris. Ooh, just one more hit. Actually, Marky gets it with a rocket. That is going to be a kill onto the AD carry, the star player of Team Manila Eagle. So uh, if this continues, it's actually going to be very troubling for H2. Yeah, this is going to be probably the most important win condition for this TME side. Getting Marky fed, allowing him to just go ham during these team competitions. And here comes a flash engage. This might be a possibility here. Death sentence onto the AD carry. Cruiser is not safe at all. Another kill goes to Marky. All Chris Kyle could do was watch because there's nothing he could have done to prevent that. Yeah, and that's exactly what TME was looking for. Marky 2 0 0 has 44 CS. Should be able to pick up his BF sword and a couple of other items after this recall. While Cruiser did have to go for the Vampiric Scepter, so he's going to be quite a bit behind. Rocks cancels the borrow, but it's not going to be enough. Marky tries to go for something here. A little bit of damage onto Chris Kyle. Here comes Cook for the assist. Actually activates it, gets excited. So I think this is going to allow Marky to escape unless Ruben goes for the head. But Pulverize, tonk, 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 and is actually going to kill him. Cook tries to go for the revenge, but I think he knows that Cruiser's right around the corner. Yeah, I think that was a lot of trust coming in from both of these members. You can see the synergy between Koops and Marky. Rather than Marky desperately trying to run away, he actually opts to stand his ground and go onto the wreck site, anticipating for Koops to come in with the respawn. And he did come in for the respawn, and while it may have been a bit too late, they were still able to get an extra kill out of it, making a terrible situation into a somewhat lesser one. Mm -hmm. uh, from bad to a only a little bit bad. This does give Cruiser a little bit of free time in the bot lane to actually establish a very small lead in CS over Marky. Here comes Patrick, gonna be ganked by Rocks with a roam. He has a lot of sustain, but the death sentence actually hits. Goes for the Hemo Flake against everyone. Here comes Cooks as well, but the charge onto Box is happening here. Cooks has to run away. Rocks also needs to get out of dodge, but he falls down. Box is gonna be the next target. Falls off of Skull. Trevor cannot do any more as he is out of mana. 
Yeah, I think they overstayed their welcome a bit too much there. They, while that hook was extremely impressive, they should have kept track of the fact that Vladimir still had the Sanguine Pool available. It was very yeah, fast as well, so we could just the, kite them. Yeah, it would have been futile anyways, and that allowed the rest of the H2 team composition to just respond. You have that fled, so easy response, easy kill. Now this kill score is 4-3 in favor of Headhunters. The gold as well is in favor of H2. Ooh, a thousand at around 8.5 minutes is quite a decent gold yeah. lead. And I mean, not only did they lose that trade in the mid lane, they conceded a lot of bottom lane pressure with Vox going to the mid lane and dying. That allowed Cruiser and Ruben to just re-stabilize re the bottom lane. If you take a look at the bot side of the map, they actually managed to get a pretty deep ward towards the blue buff. So that's going to shut Man, down that's good. a lot of ganks coming in from Coops and allow Cruiser and Ruben to just stabilize this lane. Mm, resuscitates that lane very, very nicely. Of course, Cruiser's still behind, but that pressure allows him to just get back into the game very, very nicely without having to make any big play. He did it for him, and Trevor, with a package, is ready to go for something, but right now, not really favorable. So. Yeah, he does have that Ignite available, so put up for a very aggressive play, but I feel at this point, you just want to farm up just use, okay, okay. use it like that, sure. Okay, that's that's okay. Uh, very strange way to use the package. Quite a waste of a resource, but um, still going to be fine for himself to stay in lane. Yeah. I think the first and turret of the game will be going on to JLC. 650 gold for himself, missing the last time on that, however. And even more, just going for the equalizer to really shove the wave in as a recall. Yeah, and we haven't really been paying attention much to the top lane, but it looks like JLC has been doing a really good job of trading with Box, getting a few hits onto the turret whenever he can. And I think when Box rotated towards that mid lane, JLC was able to get a he lot of damage down to the turret. To yeah. And with that, I think it paid off as the gold lead is now even before it was a thousand gold, but that first turret gold too much. Mm, 650 on the JLC. Trevor trying to go for something. He has to ignite. He just bought out the, the healing from the transfusion. The flash is available for Patrick. Gonna try and heal it up, but I think Trevor has to back off. They don't have vision of where Chris Kyle is. Yeah, and that was a bit unfortunate. Right as the Ignite debuff uh, stopped, that's when the uh, ultimate from Vladimir went off. So he was able oh, to get the blow and oh, here Chris comes Chris Kyle actually damage. going for the bot lane with Fox teleporting in. Cook gets a kill on the Cruiser. That's going to be the Dark Passage helping Rox out, but I think Ruben's going to finish off the kill as Rox once again falls to three members of the H2 team. Yeah, so that was a really good teleport coming in from Box in the bottom lane. Unfortunately, we didn't catch most of it, but I'm assuming what happened was the teleport came in from Box, got a really good fled ultimate down, was able to pick Marky, and the response from Kimi a bit too slow in that regard. Oops, and a bit too far. JLC could not have been too impactful there because he did yeah. use his equalizer earlier. And right now he's just still pushing that top lane. I don't think he managed to get much damage onto the turret. But this should be a free dragon for the Headhunters, pushing their lead a bit further up as it's now the Headhunters with the momentum and with the tempo. Oh man, that is going to be the Mountain Drake, the most important Drake out of the four elementals. And let's look at how all that happened in the bot lane. Yeah, so going a bit too aggressive, even flash, and that's just a really good punish coming in from PME. It wasn't even the Kled at that point, it was just a very poor play, I think, coming in from PME, not respecting the damage coming in from their bottom lane. And here comes Ruben. Yeah. Yeah, I think they got a little bit too overconfident in the lead there in the bot lane. And what happened was, yeah, they got absolutely collapsed on, and I don't think they minded that JLC did not have the equalizer. He had the teleport, yeah. but no equalizer means that Box is going to be more impactful no matter what in a teleport yeah, situation. Yeah, I think they went for it seeing Alistar in the river, so they thought they had an opportunity, but they didn't take into consideration the position of that Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai waiting in that bush was able to get the nice response. And Marky got caught by the train of corruption and was just standing there the entire time. Was not able to impact that fight too much. Just got bursted down. So that is quite tragic for Team Manila Eagles. But uh, And this actually puts back the gold lead in HD's favor around 1,000. Coop's trying to might go for something to steal this red buff. A little bit of a uh, reprieve from that earlier loss. But if is going to be here and actually spot him out. Dark Passage. Like TME is going to be able to 
take the pressure in that bottom lane. Looks like they won't commit towards that turret just yet. As they do need to be careful, the items aren't yet complete. And right now, TME just needs to farm up, I believe. And just wait till they get their power spikes as Triforce and Infinity Edge. Or actually, not even Infinity Edge. Ruin and Hurricane on Jinx is really important. That's something you want to com complete before you start fighting as this Headhunter's team just spikes so much earlier with that Blade of the Rune King. And they're still trying to go for something against Ruben and Cruiser. There is no teleport available for Box, and there's no one near this bot side. So if they want to go for something, they can. It is a pretty big win away, however. And that is going to be the play miss completely. Whoops, will be here for the assist. I think it's going to be Ruben, the target of... Actually, no, it's going to be Cruiser with a nice pass from Ruben. And it's going to be... Uh, another kill on to Marky. Yeah, I mean, that was a really clean play coming in from Rox right there. The blade's not hit to the point, but here comes the counter in the mid lane. Trevor. Trevor. Trouble, and I think he does, he does not have any tools to escape that gang. But seeing this is going to be a trade between turrets, most likely. But um, more kills on to Marky and a bottling turret compared to a kill against Trevor. Plus the mid lane turret, which is more important than the yeah. bot lane. I think Headhunters came out on top being able to just completely shut down this Corky right now. And this Ignite is not paying off for Trevor right now. Definitely not. I feel like he should have went for maybe the heal or exhaust as he hasn't been able to kill Patrick so far. The heal would have been so good to avoid a lot of deaths. Just be able to survive with a sliver of health. And But now he is around uh, 30 CS behind yeah. Patrick. He has one death. And it's really not paying off for him. The aggressive summer spell uh, really not uh, going in his favor. Yeah, they really need to be careful as a fed Vladimir and fled Rek'Sai can be extremely scary and just single-handedly carry the game. If you're not careful, we do see that the Vladimir already has that proto belt complete. He is holding on to the long, the needlessly long rod. So let's see what happens in Cruiser. Yeah, I thought to get Cruiser, solo killed. But I think it's going to be JLC caught out by the bull. And the Night Box will try to go for it, but seems like Cruiser gets rescued. Yeah, a really good attempt. He didn't check that bush earlier, so JLC was just able to just patiently wait his time. Go for, attempt to go for the kill. It wasn't enough. Here comes the teleport. It's going to be Box being able to teleport. No charge, however, but I think it's enough to actually scare them away from the Rift Herald. But they have to make something happen here. They cannot afford to lose something big like this. Chris Kyle actually killed Trevor uh, almost solo. Uh, that's going to be TME having to run away. They do get the Rift Herald killed, but the eye, they cannot get it. They have 40 seconds to get it right now. Will they attempt to go for it? It's going to be dangerous. Are they going to capture the, the flag? Lantern. Here's the play. You, this is Operation Rift Herald. You get the Jarvan, you EQ towards the Rift Herald, then you lantern him away. And oh, here I think it is. that's their plan. There's the Operation Rift Herald. Is he going to get it? He oh, gets it. Grab get the it. lantern. Oh, he's, he can't he's grab blocked. the lantern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> despair. Despair for Coops. Operation Phase 1, success. Operation Phase 2, failure. And Operation Phase 3 is going to be Patrick yeah, getting a kill. At that point, possibly. that is not worth Actually, it might not. It, yeah. might, it might be worth if it they get a really good push worth. from it. But yeah. at this point, H2 is now 4,000 gold ahead. And Patrick is still getting even more fed. And Chris Kyle getting more kills under his belt means that that is going to be a scary, scary wreck side. Yeah, the execution of that lantern grab didn't really go out as planned. All they had to do was grab the lantern. Yeah. He even committed the flash to try to grab the lantern faster, but no cigar. Definitely not. I think he could have just zoomed in yeah. and right click the lantern. But here oh comes yeah, here's JLC. Here's a solo kill yeah. on the JLC. Let's we'll see what happens. It's actually not a oh, solo I mean, kill, but yeah. still a very a clean kill coming from the side of H2 for this one. And uh, pretty sad there for Team Manila Eagles. Yeah, so that's a 3,000 gold lead, almost 4,000 gold lead. But CM does have that Rift Herald available, so that does guarantee them the free turret. So it depends like on how they yeah, use it. I'd like to say around the 3,000 gold lead in favor of A2. Still, anyone's game. The Vladimir, though, is starting to look a lot more scarier now. Rek'Sai looking to complete a Black Cleaver, actually, I believe. All that armor. Or Triforce. Shred. Either Triforce or Black Cleaver. It's is holding on to the Phage and the Dagger and the Longsword, so. I'm it could be. Uh, the Black Cleaver, but I'm thinking it's, uh, it's probably going to be the Black Cleaver. 
uh, the Triforce. It, you don't get the full value from it on the on the Rex side, but seems like this style just minding his own business here in the Mountain Great Pit. Koops has no idea actually that something is happening here. He is about to check it right now though, but I think it might be a bit too late. Oh, he dear. does not. And that's gonna be a free dragon coming in from Pet Hunter. Mountain Break. Really good presence of mind. Just getting all the objectives, getting these plays possible. If you take a look at his kill participation, it's above 90% right now. 515. And he's definitely been the carry so far in this game. Definitely being able to pressure out your lanes, gank the important targets. Chris Kyle definitely stepping up from the previous games. And this, this might actually lead them for their first win in the first day of GPL, Summer 2017. Yeah, and we'll no. see how TME actually recovers from that. Yeah, and here comes Chris Kyle once again, setting up the play. Nice blast cone usage. That's going to be a dead DLC right there. That is just, even with all the damage on that, uh, equalizer is not enough. Patrick just has to help Regen, and Chris Kyle is just way too powerful at yeah. this point. Patrick should have enough gold to build that Luden's Echo. That's a huge power spike onto this Vladimir. He's going to be doing a lot of damage, being able to dive the back line of this TME team, and they need to be careful as Marky, even though he had that good early start, he hasn't been able to farm up as yeah, much yeah. as he'd like to. He's actually been left behind in CS right now compared to his Headhunter counterpart. Yeah, that power is going to plateau eventually. And the longer that Patrick actually uh, goes, he's going to transition very well into a combination. He has sustained damage and he also has burst damage yeah. when he has two stacks from the transfusion. So it's really horrifying when you see Patrick rushing down on you with a ghost and then getting on you with a proto belt and the rest of his rotation. So. TME really needs to be able to survive this ordeal. Yeah, and we, be, we should be expecting a pretty big power spike coming in. I, I expect once this top lane turret falls, they're probably going to recall the setup for this Baron Drift Scout was used, I believe, in the mid lane. Um, he summoned it within the jungle. Okay, so yeah, Rift Herald slowly making his yeah. way towards this mid lane. This should be the. I feel like they won't be able to get the turret. I don't think so. They will not, yeah. Look at that. This is just all the burst damage from the Herald charging onto herself. And then that's just the damage from uh, Box and Patrick. So they weren't able to get the full value or even uh, any value from that Rift Herald as of yeah. now. They'll have to pick the fruit of that mid lane turret late, much, much later. Uh, but that might not be enough time because H2 is definitely looking to close out the game uh, soon with, by making more plays. Yeah, they do need to be careful. Uh, TME does as it is 20 minutes now, so that is the Baron buff. And H2 is sitting on two Mountain Drakes, so that's going to be an extremely fast Baron if they decide to go and take it. And they do have the power spike in regards to their items. We saw the Rek'Sai just complete his Black Cleaver. So that's a lot of damage right there, and um, in regards to TME, they do have that saving grace in the fact that Marky has completed that Infinity Edge, so we see amount of damage coming in provided he can get that positioning and get those defense. Eventually, Trevor and Marky will deal a lot of damage. Here comes uh, Cook, gonna try and go on Patrick. Patrick is regenerating a lot of health, maintaining that low, dangerous health, and is actually able to survive through all of that. This might give an opportunity for a mid lane play coming from H2 as they do take down this mid lane turret. Trevor has the package. He can use it on the cruiser, uh, but it's quite dangerous as of now. Right now, Patrick is still pushing the top lane, so right now they're not going to use that package just yet. But there they go. Probably going to go for a kill against Chris Kyle. Shutdown goes to Trevor. Going to help him recover in terms of gold. But look at all that, forcing the teleport from JLC to just defend against Patrick. Yeah, so that was one mid lane turret for that one kill. So we'll see if it's worth it or not. It and is a shutdown yeah. on to right now uh, a behind carry on the side of TME that will help him uh, come back a little bit. And As looking at the goal, he is horribly, terribly behind Patrick. And on the side of Marky, he's actually behind in gold against Cruiser. Yeah, and what's interesting is Corby opting to go for the pickaxe. So this will be an Infinity Edge as a second item. Usually as a Corky, you tend to see them go for the Static Shift, Rapid Fire Cannon. But instead, Trevor opted to go for more damage rather more than... More crits. Yeah. Uh, so that is going to be his pickup. Uh, if he's going for 
that uh, it could be edge. It will give him also a little bit of survivability with his Warlord's Bloodlust, but um, still, he needs a lot more damage and he needs more items to actually be relevant, continue being relevant against H2, is, is slowly and gradually building up a huge lead. Yeah, 5,000 gold in favor of Headhunter right now. And all that gold is on the Rex side and the Vladimir. So if they're able to shut down this Rex side, they might have a chance if they're able to isolate him with the kick. They are a pincer here, however, JLC is separated from the rest. Chris Kyle goes for the Void Rush, but here comes actually Marky gets bursted down for I think now TME is just gonna fall apart as they are crushed between the power of Patrick and the strength of Chris Kyle. Quadra kill goes to Patrick. Bloodbath in the mid lane. It just goes to show how strong this Vladimir is at this point. And Marky got out, cut out, wasn't able to do the damage he was expecting. They were hoping to burst down the Rex side before he could really do the damage, but not fast enough. And, yeah. and the Void Rush, Trevor. Out of this uh, yeah, might be definitely. The game. This might be the game if no. Trevor is not able to survive, but still, even if it's not, it's a huge lead for H2, bringing the gold lead to 8,000, getting an inhibitor in the mid lane, opening up the rest of the map, and the, everything outside of TME's base will become H2's territory. Yeah, let's take a look at exactly what happened. You see the initial pick onto Rex, like good flash, good presence of mind to go immediately onto Marky, and just watch Patrick for the rest of the fight. He gets that really nice format Ooh. movement, and ouch, right there. And Trevor can only watch from yeah. afar as his friends are slaughtered. Like, there's just so many damage that's coming in from uh, Edmonds. We've been focusing on Patrick and Chris Kyle for most of the time, but there's a couple unsung heroes here. Like, Cruiser has just been chilling at the back line mm, for most yeah. of the game, despite dying three times in the early laning phase. And Box has eight yeah. assists. The Black Cleaver and Titanic Hydra means that whenever everyone's focusing on Chris Kyle and Patrick, he's just there in the background dealing lots of damage in the AoE department. Yes, yeah, so it's just so tragic for CME right now. For the enemy, they can get into the line to pick them. Here comes the pick opportunity right here onto Chris Kyle. Chris Kyle, will you be able to escape? That's possibility. Oh, the rocket misses by around two inches. And Cook's there to finish off the kill, right. though. It would have been nice if that fell for Marky. However, yeah. a kill's a kill that will be a shutdown bonus onto Chris Kyle. And with their jungler dead, it looks like CME will be able to reestablish some control on the map. Get those wards in, shove these lanes in. But they didn't need to be careful as Fox has been pushing this bottom lane up by himself. He's in a position where he could probably 1v1 JLC or anyone who tries to defend at this point. And he does have that teleport available. On the other hand, JLC, no teleport available. Has to respond to that building up bot lane wave. And so far, uh, Chris Kyle, he has a lot of damage, right? And you can say, okay, let's just burst him down. But he has Black Cleaver. He has, he's building up the Hexbringer. He has the Ninja Tabi. Plus... If he gets caught out, he can just deal damage to one of TME and then get a few seconds of a split second of invulnerability, yeah. which is enough for the rest of H2 to actually just catch up to him and then support him. And one of the biggest problems is you have to invest so many resources as TME to actually kill this Rex side. So by the time you kill him, you have nothing left for the actual AD carry threats and mid lane threats of this Headhunter team. So. We're going to have to see how this goes as the Baron is going to be set up. Going Patrick. For it. Patrick, as soon as they see Patrick, it's the goal signal to get the heck out of there. JLC trying to do well against Fox, but all this happening while Cruiser is pushing this top lane very, very consistently. Fox actually might fall down, he does. But Chris Kyle there for the follow-up kill. He is aggressive going against Trevor, and I think he'll actually take him down with his hack trigger saving his life. This is goal signal to H2 to try to get through the turret. And it's going to be Clips and Patrick, and Cruiser rolling it out, but it's still going to be H2 leading the way. There's Marky, he can deal a lot of damage and he has to be very, very careful. Ruben pushes him away from the fight, is it enough? Shutdown goes to Marky and he has the heal play on it. It's still going to be a lot of damage. And yes, it can be counted into the heal, but this gives the rest of HG enough 
of free space to actually keep this inhibitor down. And now, yeah, DMV has their back to the wall. They, yeah, they are very, very anxious to finish this game here. They do not want to throw any advantages here, but Mark is dealing a lot of damage. Vox gets a really nice death sentence, but the Tagwin Pool is actually able to save his life. The slow from the Reign of Arrows is enough to actually possibly uh, let pass the cliff. The regeneration of the transfusion, the pick of JLC. Look at that heal from the transfusion. That's crazy, but they still get the shutdown onto him, and that is an opportunity for TMP to recuperate. Yeah, but now they need to defend their base, and that is two inhibitors down for Team Manila Eagles. That turret is really close to falling. They already have one Nexus turret down. Second Nexus turret is really close to dying, and that's almost a 9,000 gold lead in favor of Headhunters at this point. They haven't even touched that Baron yet. Let's take a look at Check exactly what happened. I feel like Headhunters overstayed their welcome, but despite that, they managed to buy so much time. Patrick just so much sustain. I think TME should invest in an execution. Yeah, uh, Marky already bought one at okay. this point. But look at that. Look at that heal. Uh, third of his health back yeah. in the fray, but of course. Not enough when there's four members wailing on you. Yeah, if TME wasn't paying attention, if they slipped, they would have their focus. This is Ruben alone. He is quite tanky. But I think he's just going to flash away. Yeah, too tanky. That, uh, that's actually a, a big cooldown from Coops. Locked away for the next minute or so. Yeah, and this is the problem we're talking about. You need to go for the picks, but at the same time, when you go for a pick, you burn too many resources, so when the actual team fight comes, when the carries show them, the show Patrick their faces, just cleans up. Yeah, you don't have anything. For them. So they have to be very, very careful. That's one inhibitor down, so that will naturally push towards them. So now TME needs to make a stand here in the inhibitor in the mid lane. It's not full health that will buy them enough time if HP tries to go for it. Yeah, and but Patrick is a scary customer Patrick's here. Patrick's AP is insane at this point. He has the Rabdon's death trap. Instead of going for the more tanky utility build, he went pure AP, and he hurts at this point. Yeah, he hurts, and he can afford to actually uh, have this full AP build, because right now TME is not strong enough to actually uh, eat through the HP that he have from getting so much AP. It seems like now the focus will be on the inhibitors. TME fighting a war on 2 plus bomb in this lane. They might try to go for something. Rock goes on to the end with a death sentence, but that's a full rise. And to the rest of your marking gets taken down, and so does Cooks, and I think this is just H2 Headhunters just putting TME's heads on a pike, making a statement that 0-2 that will become a 1-2 as TME Trevor is the only one remaining. And, and look at that, that. BM <laughs> Patrick <right there. laughs> actually goes for the kill. Unfortunately, he dies, but it doesn't matter. H2 takes away their first win. Denying TME another victory. Yeah, and what a convincing way to come out Definitely. for this game. Very clean coming in from Headhunters. They looked a lot different than they did within mm. their previous games. And it just goes to show that everyone is trying their hardest at this GPL tournament. Everyone wants to go to Worlds. And even though it might look not that great, their early game might not be great. They're going to keep on fighting. They're going to keep on trying as this is a double round robin. There's still a lot of opportunities for these teams to qualify and go to Worlds. Mm -hmm. In GPL Summer 2017, you cannot close your eyes, you cannot blink, you cannot let yourself uh, be open at any given moment because the competition will just pounce at you. Every single team in Southeast Asia is a contender and Worlds is on the line, so they're definitely gunning for it. And that just shows you you cannot underestimate any single team in the GPL. So, of course, uh, we're nearing the end of our first day. That was our sixth game. We will have two more, actually, for you guys. And, of course, we'll be your, we've been your shoutcast for that sixth game. I was at, I'm was i Atlas, and with me was Neep. And we'll be back after a break. The play missed completely. Whoops, we'll be here for the assist. I think it's going to be good bad. The target of, actually, no, it's going to be Cruiser with a nice pass from Lou Ben. And it's going to be a pincer here. However, JLC is separated from the rest. Chris Cow goes for the Void Rush, but here comes actually Marky gets bursted down. So I think now TME is just going to fall apart as they are crushed between the power of Patrick and the strength of Chris Kai. Quadra kill. No signal to H2 to try to get through the turret. And it's going to be Clips and Patrick and Cruiser drawing it out, but it's still going to be H2 leading the way. There's Marky, he can deal a lot of damage and he has to be very, very careful. Ruben pushes him away from the fight, is it enough? Shutdown goes to Marky and he has a single play on it. 
still gonna be a lot of damage. Yes, indeed. We counted this time to heal, but this gives the rest of HG enough of free space to actually put this inhibitor down. And now, yeah, TNT has their backs to the wall. They, yeah, they are very, very anti to finish this game here. They do not want to throw any advantage to Spear, but Martin is dealing a lot of damage. Rock gets a really nice death sentence, but the Sanguine Fool is actually able to save his life. The slow from the Reign of Arrows is enough to actually possibly uh, let that assist the regeneration of the Transfusion. The boot of JLC. Look at that heal from the Transfusion. That's crazy, but they still get it. They might try to go for something. Rock goes on to the end with the death sentence, but that's a pulverized. And to the rest of the yeah, market gets taken down, and so does Brooks. And I think this is just HP Headhunters just putting TME's heads on a pike, making a statement that 0-2 that will become a 1-2 as TME Trevor is the only one remaining. And look at that, that BM right Patrick there. <laughs> actually goes for the kill. Unfortunately, he dies, but it doesn't matter. H2 takes away their first win. Denying TME another victory. Yeah, and what a convincing way to come out Definitely. for this game. Very clean coming in from Headhunters. They looked a lot.